Hello, my name is Gordon MacDonald. I'm Chief Technical Officer of the British Gliding Association. Uh, I've been maintaining gliders now for 40 years and over that time we have found that as gliders get older, especially when they start nudging 50 years of age, you find more and more problems that are due to how they've been stored, um, how they were built originally, and any weaknesses or inherent problems in the design or build quality start to become a lot more apparent. Uh, and the effects of ageing, regardless of how they've been built or stored, uh, they are going to age and that's going to affect some of the structures inside the aircraft. Um, in this photo, what you're seeing is a K6 uh, starboard wing that failed in flight, um, flying along 95 knots and as you can see the whole training has failed and amazingly, uh, probably uh, to a lot of skill of the pilot, it actually flew and landed safely like this. So uh, we have the data to show you. Um, this aircraft was based in Florida, a very humid place, which is the exact opposite uh, of what you want for storing wooden sailplanes. And the reason for this failure was all the plywood ribs um, failed in the trailing edge. And when I say plywood, I mean the rib biscuits that hold the ribs together failed. And the reason they failed wasn't due, per se, to glue failure. It was actually due to the fact that they were never stuck very well in the first place. Because what they did with these ribs, often they were taken home and made on the kitchen tables in the evenings or afternoons you know, by the workers using the original rib jigs. Um, and they would literally cut a rib biscuit out of a plywood sheet using a pair of scissors. Um, you get the glue, you get the hardener, brush it, one on one side, one on the other side, put them in contact with each other and glue it in place. And what didn't happen on the whole was the abrasion of the mould release agent off the plywood itself. So when it got stuck on there, you had enough surface tension to stick it. But 40, 50 years later, there isn't enough surface tension and now they're all starting to fall off. So it's another one of the things you have to look out for whenever you're maintaining wooden sailplanes. And in this picture, you can see the problem isn't limited to just the wood. We also have issues with corrosion uh, on steel tube fuselages and stuff like that. And again, this is a 50 year old K8. And you can see when they stripped it to recover it, took all the paint off. What were some minor pinholes of corrosion, as you can see just around here, same big holes. And this is something I've dealt with for many years. And the solution I use is I look at the glider in the hangar um, when it's sat on its main wheel, I, the position it's normally stored in. Uh, and I then look at the lowest point of the fuselage and all the structural keel members in that area. And what I then do is once the glider is stripped off, I get an automatic centre punch and I calibrate it against a known tube that isn't in one of the areas like to have corrosion. Because uh, if there's any moisture, the corrosion will be at the bottom of the tubes at the lowest point. And then, once I've got a calibration dent, I then put the centre punch on the worst areas um, where there's any corrosion or the areas where it's most likely to be moisture inside the tubes where it bottoms out, where the moisture goes. And if I leave a big dent, well, a small dent from the automatic centre punch, then we know we've got a problem and we have to chop the tube out. This is actually a very reliable method, um, but this isn't just a, a problem with you know, old wooden sailplanes. We've had this problem with super cubs, chipmunks, any aircraft made with steel tube. Um, and it takes a lot of experience and confidence uh, to be able to find the problems short of just x-raying it. This problem was found on a K-14 fin that had been on the glider for 50 years. Uh, it's not straightforward glue failure. What's actually happened here, the wood has rotted out and the whole bottom two or three centimetres of the fin is missing. It's literally disappeared. Um, this glider hadn't been off, off, the fin hadn't been off for 50 years and although the aircraft was in cosmetically good condition, um, one of the many uh, parts of the BGA glue inspection uh, is to actually take the fin off uh, to check the fin for glue failure, for wood rot, and also the condition of the metalwork. 
And as you can see, the metalwork is pretty atrocious in the situation. Um, you can see this is the U-bracket, the fin plugs into the bottom, and you have holes in it, severe corrosion. Um, we have seen a few in this state, uh, in which case the only option is to check the metal thickness and replace bits as required. Uh, there's no other option. Um, when you put it back, make sure it's thoroughly corrosion protected. Make sure the wood is thoroughly, thoroughly protected. Uh, all the bolts have a um, Duralac type material on them, so uh, they don't have instant corrosion because steel and wood are not good bedfellows chemically at all. When you get glue failure, so it's a glue joint failing, um, it usually happens in the areas of higher stress. So another one of the uh, points that glue inspection brings out is hinges need particular attention at every single annual inspection, as well as an even deeper level inspection come the three-year inspection. And this is typical of a problem you might find during an annual inspection even, um, where you look at the hinge and you can just see there's some a line of um, paint that's falling off now, indicating that there's some movement going on there. The joint's not doing its job completely. Um, this is an air-on hinge, and the only solution is to quite simply take the plywood off and redo the glue joint. Um, this is not a particularly big job, uh, but the reality is if one hinge is gone, they've all gone, and you might as well do the other wing while you're at it. So it becomes a fairly big job. You end up having to recover the last part of the aircraft as well. Um, and in all these scenarios for these older wooden sailplanes, um, there's often no economic case to do this professionally. It's more than the cost worth. So within the BJ system, when we started doing glue inspections in 2004, uh, we had about 600 or so wooden sailplanes. During that period, the number has gone down massively to about 320, 330 now, that sort of area. And most of those um, reductions have been caused by glue problems that are not economic to fix. The only way to keep a glider like this going is literally a labour of love. Skill club members getting together uh, and investing the time and skill required to do it. It can all be repaired. Um, it's just a case of, is it economically worth it? Which brings us on to another point, commercial pressures. When we started doing the glue inspections, a lot of owners um, hadn't had their uh, manage of their expectations, shall we say and they were quite shocked to be told that the glider was effectively an economic write-off. Even having only just repaired it or rebuilt it in a few years previously and being a, a cosmetically very nice glider. So you do have to manage the owner's expectations nowadays. If you're going to do an inspection and if you want to be in the British Gliding Association, maintenance organisation, you have to do one, then if there's a problem, it's not going to fly again until the problem is fixed or the aircraft is scrapped. Um, it's as simple as that really. Uh, you can't just look at the glue um, joints without putting some stress on them. Here you can see a glue joint and on one side, this side here where the mouse is, it looks perfectly sound. This side you can see a small gap when you're thinking, well, maybe that, that one's falling off. But when you actually touch it, the whole lot falls to bits. Um, and this, I think, is a repeat of the uh, plywood rib biscuit problem where the plywood... Um, biscuits holding the hold it in place actually weren't thoroughly abraded and so they didn't stick very well. But it emphasises the point that it's best to look at glue joints whilst they're under a little bit of stress. So if there is a gap or a crack you can see it opening and closing. Here we have a 1986 K14 mains bar and this just shows you um, some of the build issues they had in it and also it shows you um, the design of the spar and how that works. Um, first of all you can see there's six, national no, seven laminations in this plywood and each lamination has a slightly diff different grain direction. So this particular wing actually spun in and the wing was overstressed and broken off actually and there's a section of spar out of that and you can see there's a crack here that runs up, hits that lamination um, which stops the crack moving on, it then travels down back into itself and then just a little bit into the next one. And this makes the lamination process extremely damage tolerant. Um, the other thing is, 
having the multiple glue joints increase the stiffness. Uh, there are some FAA uh, repair schemes um, in the AC43 manual, the Airman's manual, uh, that actually suggest you can replace laminations with solid. Don't ever even think about it. Um, it's far more prone to damage and it'll be a different stiffness. And here we can cut laminations. One lamination, and that's a pink carrot glue line. Two laminations, no pink carrot glue line. Three laminations, and that's an Aerodux glue line. Now, Aerodux is a um, very high quality glue, it's from formaldehyde. It doesn't really meet many modern health and safety requirements anymore, but it's by far the best glue to use um, because it's chemically inert, virtually. Um, if you put a paint strip on it, for instance, it will not affect um, the glue. Whereas you put paint strippers and say an epoxy glue, often it eats the epoxy away. Uh, it's also very waterproof. <coughs> and has stood the test of time over the last 60 years it's been in use. There's another lamination with carrot, another, another lamination with carrot, and another one with aerodux. So you can see this 1986 built main spar uh, actually has seven laminations, but within those laminations it has two different types of glue. And these are the problems we're finding when we're doing the surveys and the gliders, different bits are built with different types of glue. And the Aerodux glue, we can fairly safely say that's a good glue joint. Um, the carrot glue joints are not as uh, consistent. <coughs> um, here's another problem. Uh, we did learn during the glue process that the leading edges of elevators and rudders were particularly prone to unpeeling uh, Again, for the same problems that the rib biscuits had, they were never stuck properly in the first place um, because the, there's no proper adhesion between the uh, mould release agent on the plywood and the rest of the structure. And if you look at the picture on the left here, you have a situation where the entire D box happily unpeels itself. Um, but all the wooden um, glue joints, the same glue the D-box is a bit made with on the trailing edge are perfectly sound and don't need fixing at all in fact. Uh, whereas the easiest way to fix the D-box peeling off is quite simply to replace the D-box. <coughs> and at the same time it gives you a nice permanent fix with good quality glue for the elevator root rib which is a recurring area collective to check that anyway. But often the best way to find this problem is actually by putting some stress on it. You can hear the cracking um, as the glue lets go. And what we have to do is that every three years we have a hole in the fabric on the underneath and we put a feeler gauge between the spar and the um, leading edge plywood skins and to see they're really well bonded together. And also we give a, put a push on that shear web there where the mouse is now um, because if that fails it literally sort of pushes in leaving a gap. And so far, the first time we did this inspection, we found lots of problems uh, which I had to fix. And nowadays, it's less of an issue. They've all gone through quite a few rounds of new inspections. And when we find problems nowadays, they're very minor in nature, usually. And the very first new inspection the glider ever has, you have to do an audit of what all the different parts are made of, glue-wise. So the first column is simple, serviceable, unserviceable. Um, and then what type of glue is it? Well, if it's a slacker glider, it's most likely to be carrot or aerodux. Or it could be some other glues um, that have been used to repair it. Uh, there are many glues out there that are actually very good quality. Um, some glues are not identifiable. For instance, off the top of my head, I can't remember what glues the Polish gliders were built with, but they seem pretty good. They're pretty resistant to rot and other problems. And on the left-hand side, there's a tick list of items to check various different gliders and what you're going to find is the problems we have with gliders isn't so much a big bit like a main spar is going to fail um, so far that's not a problem the bigger problem we're going to have is actually the little bits the very primary bits like elevator root ribs or wing root ribs or, or fin root ribs those sort of fins or control guides they're the bits that need all the attention um, because they're not always easy to inspect uh, and they're the bits that if they fail are going to have a big effect and you tend to find once you get used to inspecting these items it becomes very second nature at finding the problems. And we have uh, the British Gliding Association 
mandatory to do inspection. It's done every three years on every wooden cell plane in the system. And we're in version six now. Each time uh, we learn a new lesson, we um, make a new version of it. And it walks you through the process quite clearly. There will be a version seven, um, probably coming up in six months or so, where we're going to expand the knowledge base. So, for instance, we have a lot of videos now of people doing these inspections. So, more and more now we're finding engineers don't have any experience of wood or very little experience of wood and cell planes. Um, or the ones that do are extremely old, as quite often the case is now. Uh, and some of them are up to speed in IT and that sort of thing. So having an education system where we can video the glue inspections. More importantly, video the failures. Um, it's okay videoing something that's in good order, but it's actually far more valuable to video something that's bad order. Um, and show people exactly what to look for um, on these issues. Uh, and I hope you have found this useful. Um, my name is Gordon MacDonald. If you ever have any questions on glue problems, feel free to contact me at the British Gliding Association. And um, I hope you have a good day.